Well, uh, my name is David or David, and I work at Avast uh, Gen as, as malware analyst, and I'm currently focused in, in IoT and Linux threads. Uh, let's talk about uh, Syslog K rootkit version 2 and, and the bot that it hides. Syslog K is divided in two components, the kernel rootkit and the user mode bot. The kernel rootkit has the following features. It uh, hides the, the kernel module but, and updates uh, a flag uh, accordingly with true or false, uh, depending if it is hidden or not, but in this case it's hidden. And it hides directories, processes, uh, the bot process, but also malicious processes, it hides, the, it hides the network traffic, and it also implements uh, magic packets that are relatively complex. Those magic packets uh, uses uh, different keys and different encryption algorithms, for example, uh, and it uh, can execute the bot in different modes. Uh, and it also implements its own, its own payload by executing arbitrary commands in user mode space from kernel space. And on the other hand, the user mode bot that is hidden by the rootkit uh, implements uh, different uh, protocols or different uh, services, for example, allowing the attacker to connect to it, and uh, it can run in different modes, as we already mentioned it. It can run in normal mode. I mean, uh, it simply handles a, a command from the attacker. It can run in, call, in callback mode, I mean, it uh, gets subscribed with a, with a callback to the socket, and in, in case the, the socket changes its, its state, it gets the, the, um, the command and executes the command in a loop. So, so in callback mode, it executes multiple commands. And it also allows uh, to be executed in proxy mode. I mean, uh, it, it can send, the, uh, the bot can send also magic packets to, to other computers acting as a proxy between the attacker and the other computer. And the magic packets fake uh, normal traffic or, or legitimate flat traffic like Mozilla Firefox traffic and Apache 2 traffic. And the user mode bot, of, of course, implements uh, two uh, payloads. One is to spawn a reverse shell for the attacker, and the other kill, kill its own execution. Let's talk about the kernel rootkit. The kernel rootkit, we, we found it in, in virus total. So uh, if we take a look at the mod info section, we can see that it was compiled in a Red Hat 7.6 environment. And uh, if we take a look at the magic uh, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the version of the kernel, we can see that it can be also loaded in a, a CentOS 7.9 uh, distro that uh, has a very little different kernel. So it is possible to load it in this distribution with the advantage that this is a free distribution. The features of the kernel rootkit are the following. It uh, allows to hide itself or remove itself from the list of modules in the, in the system. And it hides the user mode bot that is not continuously running. It is run via magic, magic packet sent by the, by the attacker. So uh, the user mode bot uh, hooks the read, read diff, diff function. I, I mean, it, it uh, replaces the pointer in the, in the virtual file system for uh, the read dir operation, such that uh, if, if you take a look at the, at the um, IDA, uh, this assembly, you can see the string, the, the substring that in case if it matches with the directory, the directory is hidden. There is also, um, it also uh, hides the TCP for um, events uh, from the from the host. Uh, in, in case in case the the sequential file uh, for TCP4 events uh, matches the the port of the um, of the bot, those uh, those uh, lines are, are filtered. And finally, it also implements uh, a hook in the proc field uh, function, such that uh, if if the um, if it if it if, the, if in, the, in the proc directory of Linux appears a, a file with the, with the processes in the, in the list of PIDs, PID IDs or, or, or some uh, malicious processes, those uh, are also hidden. The way that uh, syslog k uh, hooks uh, the, the, um, the functions are using this dependency, uh, an x86 and x8664 dependency. This is important because this route will not work in other architectures because of this dependency. 
And you, you can see that it performs in line hooking with this disassembly dependency. It disassembles the first instruction of the binary. In case the first instruction indicates that the function is not a virgin function, I mean it is already hooked, it skips the, the function and don't uh, performs hook on it. But otherwise it copies the original byte and then places the hooks based in a HKS structure uh, which contains uh, entries with pairs of the original function plus the um, uh, hook. And of course it implements magic packets. The magic packets works, works in this way. The attacker sends a magic packet to the computer and in the computer syslocK places three um, co uh, three um, hooks, three netfilter hooks uh, that are nfin, nfout, at, and nfin pro. Nfin uh, is the purpose of, N of the nfin hook is to get the, the port of the bot in, in order to hide it. The, the um, purpose of the nfout uh, hook is for the outgoing traffic for uh, placing the values that are able to, to load the attacker with other computers using the proxy mode. This is the is for, is for proxy mode. And NFIN Pro is the, is the um, uh, net filter hook that parses the packet and in, in case the packet fits the requirements, executes the commands in the, in the system. So, uh, in the, in the bottom of the screen, you can see the, um, a, dis a disassembly in AIDA uh, that, that shows you how, uh, it, uh, how the syslocK registers the hooks for NFIN, NFIN Pro, and NFOUT. And on the top of it, you can see a table that uh, indicates uh, all the structure of those hooks. Um, if you take a look at the, at the column priority, you can see that NFIN Pro contains, is, is, has the int max priority. I mean, it will be executed at last. But on the other hand, NFOUT and NFIN has, uh, the, has uh, int, min, int min priority, meaning that it will be, those will be executed at first. The hook number indicates uh, something that is uh, evident on the, on the name of the hooks. That is that uh, NFIN Pro and NFIN uh, applies to incoming traffic and NFOUT applies to outgoing traffic. And the thing that is important for us is that those hooks apply to uh, IP version 4 according to the PF number, which is 2. Well, if we take a look at, the, at this assembly of the NFIN Pro uh, hook, uh, on a th net filter hook, we can see that it uh, parses the magic packets, and in case the magic packet fits uh, some requirements, will execute the start check function that you can see at the right margin of the screen. And um, the, the, what this function does is to, it receives in, in the SE register of the processor the command ID to, of, the, of the command to be executed in the system. And, and, and it executes the, this command in, in user mode space. If you take a look at the table, we, you can see that there are three commands that execute the bot. Command 0, command 1, and command 2. And finally, there is an additional command that is the command 99. It, what it does is to execute arbitrary commands in user mode space. So it can start the bot, but also has its own payload executing commands in user mode space. Command 0 executes the, the, the bot in callback mode. Uh, command 1 executes the bot uh, in normal mode, I mean without parameters. And command 2 executes the bot in proxy mode. Of course, uh, one, command 1 and 2 um, update some internal variables. Uh, command zero is not fully implemented and it contains uh, bugs. So uh, the command, uh, command one and command two updates, for instance, the login information. This, uh, this, uh, these uh, values uh, that appear in, in the login info are for uh, logging the attacker. When the attacker starts the bot, some values are uh, stored in, in this uh, structure and will use uh, later for um, allowing or denying other uh, magic packets. I mean, uh, those are for, for logging the attacker with the rootkit. And there is also a field for the port, for the port bot, other variable for the port uh, bot, that is filled by the NFIN Pro uh, net filter hook, and it allows the, the rootkit for to hide the the the, bot, the port of the bot. 
there is a, also a parsing state variable. I mean, it checks uh, if, if, the, um, if the magic packets uh, are, are going well or, or those don't fit the requirements. And finally, there is a state that indicates if the bot, if the bot is, run, is, is not running, if it is zero, if it is running in normal mode, if it is one, and if it is loaded in proxy mode in case the value is two. According to the to the commands that allows to act, to start the bot, we were able to find the the bot in in virus total also. And if we take a look at the at the, at the bot, uh, obviously it implements the same the same um, commands that we already saw, starting the bot without parameters, uh, with callback mode or proxy mode. But it allows also to uh, add a port. A, com, a port argument that that allows to uh, fix the bot to a port, to a, to a listening port, instead of running it uh, in, a, in a random port. Uh, the bot uh, also implements the payloads spawner reversal and also killing the bot. You can see the, the variable PID initialized to minus one, which is um, which, which allows to kill uh, later the, the, the bot. Well, let's see. Let's see how the the, ma the magic packets, uh, well, how the proxy mode works. The attacker sends the the magic packet to the infected computer, and since in this case it, the attacker is using the step one, it starts the proxy the proxy mode. Step one is how it appears in the code and how it appears also uh, encrypted and also encoded in the in the magic packet. And of course, uh, the attacker gets login, logged in with the rootkit. Then the attacker can send a command to the bot, which is already started in proxy mode. And this is called a step two. So the bot sends a magic packet to the, to the computer that is indicated in the command. And the command gets executed in the remote computer. And the attacker, the attacker gets logged in in both computers. There is also other possibility which consists in, the, in that the attacker sends, um, sends a magic packet to the, to the proxy computer. And this is called step, step three. So the attacker can update the logging, the logging information using step three. But if there is other computer in proxy mode, it is possible for the attacker to send a command and that the bot sends also step three for updating the logging information in other computer. Let's take a look uh, uh, on how to analyze magic packets or, or, or how I analyzed it because there are more possible solutions. So uh, if, if we take a look at the, at, at the, um, at the um, rectangle, we have there a, a Python code that, uh, that, that uh, contains the, the IP header and the, and the TCP header of the, of the packet. So if you take a look at the, at the TCP header at, at the first byte, it is 45. And it means 40 because this is IP version 4, as you already saw in the table of the net filter hooks that uh, have the PF number set to 2 that indicates that it is uh, hooks for I IP version 4. And you can see also the, 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 um, the, the, the five number that indicates the size of the IP header in the words. And on the top of the, um, of the screen, you can see a disassembly in AIDA. And you can, you can notice that R12 uh, uh, is, is pointing to the IP header plus 9 offset is pointing to the protocol and you can see the comparison against 6 and if you take the, a look at the, for instance, the source code of Linux, you can see that uh, 6 means TCP protocol. So we can extend the, uh, the um, template for our, ma our, ma our magic packet to TCP. But before analyzing the magic packet, uh, it, is recommend it is recommended to, to, to patch the bot for, for not hiding itself. So what I do, for instance, is to put a return, return instruction uh, after the um, call that the, that, the, um, um, that the compiler has uh, for profiling. So uh, in, in, the, in the hide module, such that it does nothing. And uh, well, this way we can uh, list the, the, the modules because this module is not hidden anymore. And we can see that in this case it's not syslog k. They changed the name to disk sc. And then we can also print the base address of the, of the module. 
So based on the, on the base address, we, we can place uh, breakpoints on it. And also we can uh, trace uh, symbols. I'm doing K probes for this, a facility of Linux for, for tracing. And in this, in this part, you can see uh, an implementation of a, of a, a K probe that I was using that simply gets the, the, the registers that are available when, when the, when the breakpoint hits, and it uh, prints the, the value for the protocol and compares it to, to six to, to check that it fits the requirements and with the received, received uh, byte of the TCP header to, to see that it fits the requirements and so on. So let's take a look on how to analyze the command 99. I, I mean, the, 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 the magic packet that allows to execute arbitrary uh, commands in user mode space. We start with the 45 because of the IP version 4 plus the 5 uh, D words in length of the IP header. We add the, the value for the protocol, in, which in this case is TCP, which, uh, which is this. You, and, and then we start with the, TCP, with the comparisons in the TCP header. You can see that R13 is pointing to the TCP header plus D in uh, offset, uh, starting the count by zero. We can see that it points to the flags, which are compared by the constant two. So we put a two in our template. And then you can see that it gets the higher level of, of, which, uh, of a byte that is five. What, what it does is the following. R13 is pointing to the TCP header, plus C, uh, it points to the, to the byte at the C offset, but in, with the SHR R, um, um, assembly instruction, it, uh, it uh, shifts four bit uh, this byte to the right, so that, such that it gets five. Since five multiplied by four is 20, this is exactly the size of the TCP header. You can see this in the LEA or LEA instruction uh, in, in assembly language, which is uh, moving the address, the address of the data of the packet to the RDI register of the processor. Well, we are done with the IP header and the, and the TCP header. It fits the requirements. So now let's focus in the data. We can see the value one one two two three three four four, and since we will send it to the network, we need to place it in reverse order. And you can see that the next that the next instruction is a call to a function that I renamed to magic check flip last bit, and what it does is to take take the whole data and flip each, uh, the last bit for each byte. And then compare this, uh, this magic value that needs to match. You can see other comparison that, that checks the length of the data. So it needs to be at least 292. I will uh, use the value 293 and uh, subtract the length of the magic value to be precise and, and put uh, 293 bytes of data. You can see also the RBI, RBX uh, register of the processor pointing to the data plus the offset uh, four. It skips the magic value. So it is pointing to uh, to, to a data which is expected to be a null terminated key. Uh, you can see uh, that I add this key with the, with the null value and also uh, adjust the padding for this. And finally, you can see the arbitrary command. We reached the basic block that, that we was looking for. RBX is pointing to the data plus 24 uh, uh, bytes in, in hexadecimal we need to place there the arbitrary command and then adjust the padding. This is how a K probes a looks like when, when, when we execute this, this Python code. We have in the left, in, in the left part of the screen, you, you have the shell that is executing the, sending the magic packet. And on the other hand, you can see a terminal that is printing the, the, the output of, of our tracer uh, using K probes. And you can see that it executes our arbitrary command. 
Well, I will not go with all the details and all the uh, comparisons with all the magic packets, but I will tell you all the relevant information for the rest of the magic packets. Command one executes the bot without parameters, I mean in normal mode. And uh, what, it, what, what it does is to check um, the, the valid, uh, I, 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 that, that, the, that the packet contains uh, the, the um, one identif identification of, of, the lead of, of, of the list of valid IDs and uh, one value of, of a valid six that, that are the sequence number for the TCP header. Uh, well, the bot, when, when the bot sends it in, in proxy mode, it, it chooses one value at random. And, well, there is an additional version of command one that allows to kill previous instances before executing the bot. And what it does is to use the magic value 000000 to see. This means killing before executing. And uh, the, the, um, there is also the possibility of executing the bot in proxy mode. What, 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 uh, what we need to do for the magic value, for the, for the magic packet, is to place the string step one encrypted with AES, AES in counter mode using the appropriate key, plus uh, and prepending the, the length to it of, the, of this encrypted data uh, using uh, numeric characters. And finally, all of this data encoded in base 60, using base64 encoding. Well, uh, this is not the only, the only place where encryption is, is used. You can see that it uses AES encryption, and this is the implementation, this GitHub uh, repository. You can see that it uses an one XOR uh, key. That is an alternative solution to the magic value that we was using, one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. And there are also more keys that are not being used by this sample with other functions that are not being used by this sample. But those can be used in other samples, in other samples. And you can see that it also contains code with RC4 uh, encryption with, with the keys and the IVs and all the parameters uh, with other functions that are also not used in the sample, but maybe in other samples those are used. And there is also a variant on command ID2 that again uh, allows to run the, the proxy mode, but killing previous instances. And it again consists in sending the magic value 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 to C. Well, and of course, it is possible to update the login information when the attacker uh, gets logged in, in with, the, um, with the rootkit. It is also possible to update those values using this, uh, this other uh, command that is step three, and it is encrypted with AES in counter mode, prepending the length, and finally encoding it with base64. And you can see that it must to be, uh, it checks that the state is two, I mean uh, running in proxy mode, and this is just after running the proxy mode, the, because of the variable three that, in, that indicates that, that the, the proxy mode was executed successfully. You can see that the callback mode is not uh, enabled in the rootkit, because uh, it doesn't work. You can see that are cross-references to the start check function, but only with the other uh, common IDs uh, hard-coded as a constant in the SC register of the processor. The, if you run the if you run the, the um, if, if if you run the callback mode in 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 the bot manually, uh, it it uh, consumes a lot of resources and uh, it is not working. But the logic uh, uh, can be uh, understood. Uh, we can see that it reduces the, the code from another ng for the for the hooks. It uh, hooks the virtual file system. And in this way, it is able to hide the, direction, the, the directory with the malicious stuff. And we can see that it performs inline hooking using the UDIS86 uh, disassembly dependency uh, with the um, uh, proc, proc field here for hiding processes that matches a list of pith, but also the, the, um, those strings, the, the bash process, sh process, and also the bot, the bot processes, which has this name, sm1, and so on. It also hides the malicious uh, traffic of, of the bot, 
and what it does is to store the, the, the port of the bot in an internal variable and then uh, filter the events for the uh, sequence file that, that, that uh, stores the, the events uh, for uh, IP version 4. Well, let's, let's take a look at the, at the bot itself. Sorry. It, uh, the, the bot exposes different services or protocols to the attacker for connecting to it. For instance, an example is, is the SMTP fake protocol. And you can see that it is, that it is uh, hard coded the, the, um, the value for. So depending on, on, on which value is hard coded in the, in the sample, it will uh, expose one service or another. Again, the, the comparison against F4 with the fake SMTP server. And if we take a look at the code of the SMTP server, we can notice a typo on it. That allows us to go to the, to the source code on the internet that dates for uh, 2017. Uh, well, this is the code that they, they use for implementing the SMTP server. We can see that depending on the, on the protocol, they have a, a, a function that handles uh, both TCP, TCP or SSL, depending on the protocol that is being implemented. So it's tra transparent from the developer's perspective. And in case it uses SSL, it will uh, rely on this certificate that way they was uh, using also in syslog version 1, which is interesting for hunting new samples. And uh, the magic packets that, that the bot sends are not evident. I mean, those fakes Apache to um, a, um, a legitimate Apache 2 uh, service and a Mozilla Firefox um, application. You can see in the right uh, margin of this table how um, it um, structures the, the, the code of, the, of these um, fake um, applications. And of course, uh, the steps and also other values that that are that can be encrypted and then, and then encoded uh, are uh, performed in this function in the in the in the bot. And those values, the step uh, the step two and the step three, uh, goes in the cookie ID. This is the reason why they use Base 64. They want to make it uh, um, more realistic. And uh, you can see uh, the dependencies that they use for, uh, for um, performing the, the, con the connections. Uh, what they rely, they rely in this um, dependency, which is part of a course from here, from France, the Cursus et Communication. And it, uh, it is a network toolkit. We can see also a more specific dependency which allows to implement um, magic packets, the, the craft the magic packets in user mode space. This, they used this, uh, this code snippet for setting the IP address, uh, or sorry, the, the, IP, the IP header uh, values and the TCP header uh, values. And well, uh, that's all. As conclusion, uh, we can see that uh, Linux streets are getting more and more complex, that a net filter can be abused in different ways. For instance, it can implement magic packets, but it can also uh, skip the firewall in case, in case uh, because uh, IP tables rely in, in net filter. And the combination of mm -hmm. traditional rootkit uh, techniques that we can see in, in GitHub and so on, and fake services and magic packets, makes of syslog K version 2 an, an interesting and powerful rootkit that can inspire others to, to implement uh, botnets. That's all from my side. <laughs> Questions? You have a chat open. Up. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. I go over there first. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Um, 
did you check on Shodan or equivalent tools if some fake services are exposed on the internet, maybe through the SSL uh, public certificate? Well, uh, no, I, I didn't uh, check it in, 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 in Shodan. We was uh, looking in, in our telemetry, but um, it seems that, the, that this malware is under, the, under development. Uh, as you can see, the callback mode, for instance, is not, uh, is not fully implemented. And um, it seems that they are uh, implementing the, the rootkit and from time to time submitting samples for, from VirusTotal. I want to be transparent. We found it in Barus Total. OK. Thank you. Thanks. Hi. I was wondering how you actually found the sample that you started investigating in the first place. How did you find it, and how did you figure it was going to be interesting enough to start investigating it? Sorry, can you can you repeat the question? How did you actually come across the sample in the first place? How do you how did you find it, and then how did you decide it was going to be interesting enough to start looking into? Well, uh, I'm 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 always uh, hunting uh, files uh, in in different um, um, services, and one of them is is Virus Total, and and well, uh, by writing Jara rules and so on, uh, we was able to find it. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, very thorough research. And uh, my question is, did you find like any live infections in your telemetry uh, in your data? And also, how far back uh, this rootkit goes? Is it very recent? And, and also, you didn't uh, no mention any obfuscation. So there was no obfuscation in the rootkit? So three questions. Mm -hmm. Well, um, th th there is no obfuscation in the in the in the sample. It's, it's not it's not obfuscated, and and uh, well, we we don't find data on it, and we also don't saw uh, others uh, publishing anything about it. But uh, w what we are doing is uh, looking for this. Uh, we f we first look for for features that we know that rootkits tend to use, and we count uh, samples this way. With different sources, and um, and well, it matches our, our our rules, and we was able to find that. Thank you, Nikita, for the question. Okay. <laughs> um, did you try to defend with NetFilter this NetFilter attack? Like uh, managed to build some firewall rule that can block this magic packet. Uh, uh, sorry, are you are you asking if 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 I found other samples? That no, 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 no. I'm asking, did you can you uh, use some IP table or NF table rules that could block the magic packets? Because basically they seem clearly defined, so we could could just block them on a firewall before it reached the server. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I, I know, I'm not probably not the, the appropriate person for for, ask, for asking this for replying this question because uh, I, I simply find uh, malware that is that is new, but uh, even if I create detections and so on, uh, that there are other uh, other other groups, other 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 departments that are that are responsible of, of creating the technology and so on, and maybe they uh, know more about it. Thank you. Hello, uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, I wonder if you have any ideas on uh, detection. Sorry? Uh, I wonder if you have any ideas on the detection, like uh, uh, on the execution uh, stage or later when it's already running. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, there, are, there are a lot of points where, when you, where you can see, uh, you can see the files that it creates, you can see the, the net filter hooks that it, that it places, and well, you can see that it also hides itself, that it reduces code from other ng. So there are a lot of places when, where you can uh, create detections for it. Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.